People have been asking me how did I do this one, which is a tile inside a towel ring inside the stuff for home model section. Well, actually, it's not that complicated, so let me show you how it's done. Here's the model, and I'm gonna recreate this one. So, what I need is I go to the top view and I have to create a piece of cloth. So, that's gonna be a rectangle, something like this. Rectangle needs to be a spline and vertices, all of them, you need to break them. This is very important, otherwise the garment modifier doesn't work. So, like I said, next thing you need is the garment modifier, so it's the garment maker down here. And what this one does is creates a nice randomly spread geometry fees. So that's one. Next step is I need this towel ring, so let me make a copy. And I have to put it somewhere like here. <coughs> and now I have to scale this one up to make sure that our towel is inside the ring. So that's the basic plan, basic steps. So next, I'm going to make sure that this one knows that it's cloth. I'm going to define it, cloth modifier. Select object properties, say, okay, this is a piece of cloth. Let's do cotton. <coughs> and this towel ring, 01, is going to be our collision object. So that's it. Now check the other one, just to make sure. This one knows it's cotton. This one is the towel, is the collision object done. So now make sure gravity is on. I checked self-collision and intersection, so that's going to be okay. And let's do simulate local or simulate local damped. Damped gives smaller steps, so it's falling smoother. And you can see already what's happening. It is nicely dropping the towel inside the ring already. And the only problem is, is that the ring is a bit too big. But we're going to sort that one out. So let this one run for a little bit. I can stop it and change to simulate local, which is a bit faster. All right, happy with this setup for now. So what I do is I say, okay, well, this is my new state because the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to rescale this one to this size again and let it rescale or rearrange the cloth as well. So what I'll do is, okay, I say set initial state, done. Now this one needs to be animated over time. So out of key, let's say until about 400, it is going back and it's going back to, let's say, oh, wrong object, sorry. It's going back to 100, 100, 100. So we have the original ring size back again. And that's it, so back again. And now you, you need to do the following. Don't press simulate local or press simulate local damp, but press the simulate button because that one makes sure that an animated object is able to deform this piece of cloth. So what you can see now is you get a new window up here, which is doing the calculations, and you can see the ring is getting smaller and it is still lifting up the piece of cloth. So it's going to be something like this, I hope, or similar like that. So just let it run for the uh, 400 frames, and then it has another 100 frames to settle down to the proper well, form or shape you want to, or to let it relax a little bit more. So here it's going, it's moving, it's slowly but surely. The cloth is starting to wrinkle, here it comes. It's being wrapped up inside the ring. A little bit more, a little bit more. So leave it running, leave it running. It closes on finish because that one is checked on, so it will stop. Okay, done. So now what we made is we made this animation, basically, of this towel. Well, it hasn't folded up as nicely as the other one did, but it gives you the idea of how you can interact with your piece of cloth and animated objects. So that's how I did this one. It's pretty simple, straightforward. Make sure you use the cloth and the garment for the uh, 
material down here and you will get eventually you will get nice stuff like this that's it